Hello everyone and welcome once again to The View from the Midwest. It's time for our weekly look around the NHL Central for Bleeding Blue. And let's get right to it. We'll start things off with the Dallas Stars. Uh, the Dallas Stars signed a couple restricted free agents over the last week. Matthias Backman was uh, inked on Thursday, but uh, he's likely going to stay in the AHL, get a couple more years of, uh, at least one more year, but uh, a little more seasoning under his belt before the Stars can really fully be comfortable with him up on the NHL roster. Uh, and then Brett Ritchie was signed to a one-year deal that will see him stay in the NHL because it is a one-way deal, and that deal is worth $875,000. Uh, and that deal is pretty much going to give Dallas um, a little more depth, obviously, signing a, a decent player in Ritchie, obviously somebody that they feel can help them out, keep him as a restricted free agent because I don't believe that he's going to hit unrestricted status by the time this one year is over. So you give your team a little bit of extra depth and also give your team some financial flexibility as well, which is something that they're going to need heading into uh, free agency. And speaking of flexibility and the cap, uh, the Stars are going to have to choose between Vernon Fiddler and Patrick Eves. Uh, Josh Clark, one of the writers over there at BlackoutDallas.com, says that um, the Dallas Stars might actually bring back neither player, which would be an interesting move, considering that those two players were uh, fairly uh, important. Not obviously as important as some of the top-line guys, but they were still uh, cogs in the machine to help the Dallas Stars get to the second round of the playoffs, and neither of them might come back, but only one or the other is going to come back because the Dallas Stars are unlikely enough to have the kind of room to keep both of them. So check out that article by Josh as it's an interesting read. Speaking to Josh, he also did a piece discussing that the window for the Stars is just opening if they can just find some goaltending help. And that's obviously going to be the big key because that was what kind of held the Stars back this past season. They have a lot of players. They have some young players. They have good talent. Talent. They have the key guys signed for long, long-term long contracts, given the overall status of the NHL. So they are going to be a team to be contended with for quite some time. But in saying that, you also have to take into consideration the, the Blackhawks are kind of an aberration. You don't normally see teams that are just top of the league every single year anymore. There's always fluctuations from year to year. That's what kind of makes the St. Louis Blues interesting the past few years. Despite the fact that they've crashed out in the playoffs, regular season, they've been towards the top of the league every single year for the past three, four years. And that isn't necessarily the norm. So it's going to be interesting to see how Dallas shakes out. The Chicago Blackhawks... Um, not a ton going on really for the Blackhawks news-wise in terms of hardcore rumors or anything like that. Uh, basically their past week was celebrating the the anniversary of their 2010 Stanley Cup, which was their first in 49 years, so congratulations to them for that. And, and I do have to say that even as a St. Louis Blues fan, I, I was not rooting for the Blackhawks in that series, but... Um, I do have family up in Chicago, and most St. Louis Blues fans know somebody from Chicago, so you would not necessarily begrudge them the opportunity for them to win it. Now, the Cups uh, following that were a little bit too much because they've grown a little bit big-headed, but that's a whole different story. Uh, Sean Fitzgerald made the case that the Blackhawks are going to be better off without Andrew Ladd, and that's an interesting argument, really, especially since he was brought in at the trade deadline to be kind of that missing piece that they were missing from their previous cup run and hopefully carry them over the edge. He obviously didn't necessarily get that done. Uh, Sean argues that he was possibly one of the worst players on that top line out of the whole uh, kind of mix that they tried on there. So that's an interesting read uh, over at BlackHawkUp.com. Uh, I urge you to check that out. And then uh, Mario uh, Tirabasi. I knew I was going to mess that up. I apologize. He also discussed some of the rumors about uh, Tivo Teravainen possibly getting dealt away from the Chicago Blackhawks and said that should be the last thing on the team's mind. And I agree with him there. He He showed that he was a dynamic force in this season. He wasn't necessarily going to be one of your top scorers, especially when you've got talented players like Taves and Kane. But it was still 
a, a big piece. It, it would be almost akin to the St. Louis Blues trading away uh, one of their younger talents, who isn't necessarily high up in the echelon of the league, but compared to what they do for the team, would be a big mistake, and I agree with him on that one. Moving right along, the National Predators are doing a lot of the uh, delving into the draft and the free agency right now, uh, so congrats to the crew on some of the work that they're doing over there. Jack Doherty and uh, Luke Coonan are a couple of the names that are being bandied about right now in terms of drafts that uh, draft picks that might be used for the Predators. And then P.A. Parento and Yuri Hoodler are some of the free agents that they are going to look into as well. So it's full off-season mode over there for the Predators as they are really excited down in the Music City to try to build on this most recent cup run to, to where they got knocked out, obviously, by the Sharks. So they're going to have to try to build on some of that and try to make it. Also, Doug Prasic. Uh, made the interesting case that the Predators might be better without Steven Stamkos. And I really get where he's coming from because the St. Louis Blues are kind of in a similar situation. Uh, really, they don't have the kind of cap room that the Predators have, so the Predators are even in a better situation in regards to that. But the Blues could maneuver certain pieces around if they really, really wanted to. But the key in that is, are you going to mortgage everything for the now, because if you sign Steven Stamkos, then that's basically what you're doing, because the rumors are going around that he's wanting a deal worth around $10 million per year for as long as maybe eight years. You might be able to talk him down a little bit on the years, not so much on the money, and that's just going to handcuff a lot of teams for their future in terms of keeping your players that maybe maybe come up through the ranks, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, we have a really good player on our hands, but he's going to want a lot of money here in the next year or two, and we're still paying Steven Stamkos, especially if you give him a long-term deal, because by the time that contract rolls around, he's in his mid to late 30s, and that's one of those situations where the, the, the tail of the tape is going to start dropping off. It's, father time is undefeated. So, uh, eventually your skills start to wane, especially in a game as quick and as tough as hockey. So, long-term deals when you're already in your upper 20s aren't necessarily the wisest decision. Somebody's going to give it to him. Uh, but I kind of agree over there with Doug that perhaps it's not necessarily the wisest decision for some of the mid-market teams even if you can afford it. Uh, the Minnesota Wild have pretty much filled out Bruce Boudreaux's staff. They signed Scott Stevens and John Anderson. One little note on there, especially for the Blues fans watching, um, there's been a lot made about John Anderson being let go by the Chicago Wolves. The Chicago Wolves are their own entity. They aren't really run by the St. Louis Blues. And Now, I can't say that the St. Louis Blues didn't maybe have a word on the decision, but really, I think it was Chicago's decision to let John Anderson go and and it had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that Ken Hitchcock was around and then everybody's blaming this on the coaching staff search and what have you. The Chicago Wolves let John Anderson go. Uh, he, he was very successful on that level. He hasn't been quite as successful at the NHL level. But it was a Chicago decision. It wasn't really based on the St. Louis Blues, and I think that needs to be put out there. Uh, the Wild are one of several teams that announced their preseason schedule. It's going to feature home and homes with Colorado and Winnipeg, as well as a game with uh, Carolina and Buffalo sprinkled in there as well. Turner Olson also made the case that GM D D Chuck Flesher... Chuck Flesher, excuse me, uh, if the Wild have another bad season, might be the next one out the door. And that's really the case of a lot of general managers, but especially up there with Minnesota because they've put in quite a bit of money, uh, signing some big-name free agents, haven't necessarily seen that turnaround in terms of playoff success. Kind of similar to what the Blues were going through a year or two ago, and it'll be interesting to see if he gets the axe if they don't perform. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche, are, uh, they have some interesting arguments going over on MileHighSticking.com. Obviously, some people think that they should trade Tyson Berry. Others, th others think that he should stay. Uh, if he stays, though, what is he going to be worth? And uh, Nadi Archuleta takes a good look at that. Uh, he's a similar player to Kevin Shattenkirk in terms of the offensive numbers that he puts up, but he's also similar in terms of stature. He's not the biggest player, not necessarily the greatest defensively, but 
There are a lot of teams that want him, so that's going to drive his price up as well. So it doesn't make sense for the Avalanche to even, to even think about keeping him if they can bring in a pretty good haul in a trade. So big decisions to be made in the Mile High City. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets, pretty much like last week, not much going on north of the border. Uh, the biggest news is the report that tickets are going to go on sale on June 15th for the October 23rd Heritage Game. So if you're a Winnipeg fan, if you're a season ticket holder, you're watching this and you didn't know beforehand, make sure to look out for that. That'll pretty much wrap up the news for the Central Division. Uh, keep tuned to BleedingBlue.com for your latest on the St. Louis Blues from the fans' point of view. But until the next time, I'll see you then.